Hi, I'm Alberto Lombardi. A few people asked me if I could show my current pedalboard and how I obtain my sound, so I decided to make a quick video. I will play for you all my pedals by themselves and in the combinations I use. I'll also tell you why I use a switcher to change between sounds when I'm live. What is a switcher, you ask? I'll tell you that too and how it works. If you enjoyed this topic, please like the video, it helps reaching more people. So here's how my pedal board works. Every pedal that you see, besides the delay and the reverb, are connected to this big guy over here, which is the switcher. I will tell you how the switcher works in a minute. Let's talk about the pedals first, and especially let's start with the gain pedals. So I have a few overdrives, as you can see, and I like to mix them and match them to taste. The base of my sound is done with the two Secret Effects pedal. Secret Effects is an Italian company, so these are boutique pedals and they're actually close by, they're good friends and they live near here. The green one, the big one, is an overdrive and it's called Secret One, and the brown guy is actually a compressor and it's called Soul Pressure. The way I combine them is that I put the compressor after the overdrive, so that I can get the overdrive to react to my volume knob without being affected by the compressor. That's very important for me. I'll show you. So this is with the volume knob all up, but it's, if I roll it down a little bit, I obtain something like a clean sound. Especially if I pick lightly. And every touch of the volume knob changes the gain right away without going into the compressor. I will tell you about this in another video because it's actually a complex topic, but for now let's just say I prefer to go straight into the overdrive and then compress the sound a little. Moving on to the next pedal in the gain section, I have a full tone OCD. It changes sometimes, I can put into the pedal board a Red Rock by Providence or a BB preamp to substitute for that, but basically the OCD has a very complementary tone to the secret one, so when I put them together, which I'll show you later, the sound is really great and I like it very much because the OCD has less mid-range and really complements the mid-rangey sound of the secret one. But I also use the OCD to obtain my main comping crunch sound and it sounds like this. <laughs> To get my lead tone, I combine the secret one and the OCD together, but I don't like to have the compressor in the chain, so the switcher takes care of that, and I will tell you how it does it in a little bit, but let's just now hear the sound of the two pedals together, the OCD and the secret one.
Okay, there's no such thing as too much gain, so these two pedals together sometimes are not enough. And what I do is I kick in with a little TS9, the Ibanez TS9, the Tube Screamer, just to add a little more bite to the sound, a little more sustain as well. So while I'm doing a solo, I might just kick in right in the middle of the solo with the TS9, just to add some excitement, like this. <laughs> You can see the sound is still very dynamic, but if I want a full-blown overdrive, I just kick this. The sound is very similar, it's not that different, and the TS9 is actually in between the Secret One and the OCD. It also helps with very fast passages, I won't deny that. Sometimes you want a different flavor of overdrive, a different taste, so I always reserve a spot in my pedal board for something like that. In this case I have this Love Pedals Woman Tone, which was designed to emulate the woman tone from Clapton, but actually I don't use it for that purpose. I use it because it's a very good sounding fuzz, not too much gain, but very distinctive tone. Let's check it out. Okay, let's move on to the modulations. We will start with my basic sound, which is the two secret effects pedal, the overdrive and the compressor, and I will add the modulations. The first one that we encounter and that I have here, you see, matching colors, is the Jack Rabbit, which is a tremolo. And I like to put it before my overdrive, so the pulsating thing that the tremolo does influences the gain. I like it very much, it sounds like an old amp, compared to put it afterwards where the gain of the pedal remains constant and the volume fluctuates. In this case I have the gain fluctuating, which is much better to me. The next modulation in line is the chorus, you see, matching colors and this time as well with the chorus. The chorus is a CE3 from Boss and it's a very nice sounding chorus. Sometimes I crank the rate up to obtain a Leslie-like sound, so this is the basic Mm, average chorus sound that you might want for accompanying a pop song. But if I want a very intense chorus effect, I go down to the pedal board and tweak the rate knob. The next pedal is your average Dunlop Wawa, nothing fancy here. I turn it on with the switch and I play it.
also have a phaser that I rarely use, but sometimes when I play Pink Floyd, that's what you're gonna get. Besides the tuner, the last two effects on the pedal board are a delay and a reverb. Let's check them out briefly. The delay is a Strymon timeline which has an amazing sound and two presets. So I keep the first preset, the purple one, with a mild delay just to be underneath. It's a nice tail, it's a little dark. This is the digital machine, so it's not a vintage emulation, but I like to roll off the top end of the delay. The second preset, the red one, is actually something I use to obtain a de-edge-like sound. Also from Strymon I have the Blue Sky, which is a very nice reverb. Both the pedals from Strymon have amazing conversion quality, so I don't mind keeping them in line and not in an effects loop, because they really sound amazing, they don't degrade your sound at all. Up until now you've been hearing the reverb from my recording software, but now we'll turn it off and play just with the Blue Sky on. Check it out. It's clearly mono because we're going into the amp, but I don't mind it when I'm live. And it also has a second preset that you can set beforehand and just recall whenever you need it. And I set up a very large reverb for some particular circumstances. Especially if you combine it with the delay. You might have noticed that big box in the center of the pedal board. That is my switcher. It's made by Daniel at GigRig and it's called the G2. They now have an updated version that is called G3 with a few more features and you might be familiar with him because he's the guy behind YouTube's Dead Pedal Show. The switcher solves two problems. The first one, it avoids degrading the signal when you go in through lots of pedals. The second, it can store combinations of pedals on a single switch, saving you from tap dancing. Let's see how it works. The pedals are always on and inside loops. You get into the switcher with your signal, if you don't activate any loops, the signal goes straight out to your amp, unaltered. When you activate one loop, the switcher simply has the signal routed into that pedal and back, so only the pedal you activated gets into the signal chain. Plus you can make combinations and store them on a single switch. Let me show you. On this pedal over here I have my main sound. So the sound gets only routed to the secret effects, secret one and soul pressure. But if I want my lead sound to happen, I want to turn off the compressor and engage the OCD. So I press this switch over here. And with just the press of a button, I turn off the compressor and on the OCD. Let's see another example. Let's say I'm doing a solo with the Wawa, so I have three pedals on. The OCD, the Secret Effects, Secret One, and the Wah. Let's say that I have to quickly go into a cleanish, chorusy sound. What will I do? I just need to press one button to turn off all the pedals that I want I don't want to sound and on the pedals that I actually want to hear. 
Most switchers operate either in preset way, where every switch corresponds to a combination of pedals, or in single loop activation mode, where you can activate each pedal at a time with a single switch. The G2 has the ability to program each switch either as a single loop on or off, or as a preset. That allows you to configure your board in a very specific way that suits your needs. This was usually found only in super expensive systems like the Bradshaw rigs, but this does the trick very well and doesn't break the bank. The reason why I like this is because I don't want to program a preset for every sound that I might need. Sometimes, let's just say I'm playing with a tremolo. <laughs> Maybe I just want to add a chorus on top of it. I prefer to do this as I was pressing a single pedal. I don't want to have a preset for all those combinations. But I do have a chorus preset, because sometimes I want to quickly jump from a lead tone to a chorus, as I showed you before. It's a matter of fast versus versatile. I want to be able to change quickly, I use a preset. I want to be able to add things at my taste, I use the on-off switch. Also, you might have noticed I don't do distortion with amps, I use pedals. That's much easier when you're touring, because you often find rental Fender amps, and it's a blessing to rely only on your pedal board to get your sound, while still using analog gear. Thanks a lot for watching, and let me know if you have questions down in the comments. Also, like the video because it tells YouTube to show it to more people. This is very important. I will do more specific videos about why I've chosen specific pedals and why I combine them in a specific way or order. So be sure to subscribe, but be sure to click the bell and activate notifications. That's the only way you'll be sure to see my future videos. Until then, Alberto Lombardi. Ciao!